Howdy. Welcome back to the Rhinestone Rope Replace. Today we're going to talk about your spot cord trick rope. How you should treat it, whether or not you should paint it. But first, go ahead and uh, subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Push the like button and share. I'd appreciate it. So you just bought a cotton spot cord trick rope. It's pretty. It's white. Looks like it'll work great. This is my old cotton spot cord trick rope close to 20 years old. These are about the same length. This one is much lighter than this one. This one is heavier. It's heavier because over the years I've painted it. That's how I like to treat my ropes. I paint them. I'll tell you why in a moment. But over time, they can't wear out. They can get fuzzies on them, start to get kind of rough, and if you hold it in the same spot a lot, they can actually wear out. But what are you going to do with your brand new rope? I talked to one person who uh, said that they were told to put their brand new rope in the washing machine because they didn't want they didn't want these kinks living in. You see these waves in this rope. This rope may have come from the center of the spool when it was sold to me. If, it, if they come from the outside of the spool, the circle that it's in is, is much larger than if it comes from the center of the spool. If it comes from the center of the spool, your rope your rope may have some kinks in it. And when you build your loop, it may remember those waves and that's that's kind of annoying so these folks thought that instead of having this kind of stiff rope that it'd be better to, to completely wash the sizing out of the rope and make it completely limp so it didn't remember any of these curves I, I guess I would uh, disagree with that when you first get this rope it's got something on the surface of it I think they call it sizing they put it on there it's, and it, uh, it stiffens up that rope it gives it a slick surface and protects those uh, fibers of the rope from fraying. It also protects it from dirt, I would say. But it makes it, uh, it gives a little bit of stiffness. Now, if you're using a, a poly rope or a maguey rope, then those ropes have a lot of stiffness, a lot more than these cotton ropes do. But that sizing uh, kind of evens the score a little bit, it makes it just a little bit stiff, gives it some body, so it'll hold the loop a little better. So I would suggest not to get this rope soaking wet and certainly not to wash it in the washing machine when you first get it. If you're moving this rope in a, in a flat loop around your body, you can take it around, take it around pretty well. But when you get to doing butterflies with it and especially bigger loops that are going uh, vertically through the air, you know, you're counting on that rope, the mass of that rope to be able to throw that over there and have it, have it go against the against the air, or if there's a breeze going against the wind. I've gotten used to my heavier ropes. Maybe my problem is I got used to a heavier rope because I paint them and that adds, adds weight. But when I get a brand new rope like this, it doesn't behave like I want it to because it's too light. And maybe that's just my opinion. You know, this is all just a personal preference. So if you don't like to handle you this rope, your rope in the manner I'm going to explain, you give me a comment and tell me why. I'd, I'd like to hear it. But for my purposes, I'd rather have a rope that has a little more body to it and a little more weight. So first thing I do is, is paint my rope. I'm going to take a look at my rope. It's getting kind of worn. See those fuzzies right there? Getting kind of wore out. Even got a worn spot right there where I hang on to it a lot at the end of my rope. But the consequence of that is it feels kind of bumpy, it feels rough. And if my spoke touches my loop, either with like a butterfly or going underneath my loop for a Spanish ocean wave or something like that, if that rope touches itself, it tends to hang up on itself. I need this rope to be kind of slick. It'd also be nice if this rope were bright white for the audience, it's turned kind of gray. So I'm gonna paint this thing and that's what we'll do today is show you how, the, at least I, paint my ropes. And this is the paint I'm going to use. Went down to Walmart and bought that over in the craft section. It's acrylic paint. Now this has a matte finish. You can get the glossy finish. I'm not sure which is best. This paint uh, seals them up, kind of protects them from, from that kind of abrasion. And it keeps them from uh, getting the dirt in the, uh, in the strands of rope. So taking this rope, I stretched it out on this clothesline. Made it fairly tight with my baling twine there. I didn't tie it on my Honda because I don't want my Honda deformed by this process. 
I'm gonna take a paint and square it right into my hand and then rub it down the rope. I wanna work it into those pores. Make all those fuzzy things lay down. And that uh, paint will, will hold them down and hopefully this rope will be nice and smooth. It'll be easier to do my tricks. Plus look how pretty it's gonna be. You want your rope stretched while you paint it and stretched while it dries. And you do that so it will add body to your rope. Your rope will be a little stiffer. And once this dries, the only memory your rope will have will be straight. I guess if I had any cuts on my hand or interruptions in my skin, I would wear gloves to do this. But this paint is water soluble and if you, uh, especially if you wash it off right away, it comes right off with water. Go down and make sure all my fuzzies are laying down. If you leave your fuzzies standing up, then that paint dries those fuzzies and they're, they're really, really rough. Then you have to put on a glove that you don't care about and rub your glove down there and, and wear those fuzzies off. Okay, we got the whole thing painted. Just running one more light coat down, make sure it's all, all the fuzzies are laying down. We'll need to coat the rest of that there. We'll probably have to wait till it's off the line. Leave that strung up there till it dries. I'll go get the paint off my hands. Now, especially if you used your rope before you painted it, you got used to how it felt. But if you take it out and paint it, it's going to be a lot stiffer. But the good thing is, if you stretch it and paint it, it won't remember any of the little twists, any of the waves that were in it when you first got it, when it first came out of the school. Especially when you, you take it off the line and you spin it the first time, it's going to feel stiff, it's going to feel really weird. But if you practice with it, two things will happen. One is you'll get used to how it feels and you'll, uh, you'll wear that paint down just a little bit. You'll make it a little more flexible. And I think you'll like the results of your rope after it's painted. It will certainly be prettier. <laughs> It'll be smoother. It'll be prettier. Your audience can see it from a lot farther off. They can tell what you're doing. This rope, when I get this rope going fast, you know, if the lighting's not perfect, maybe they can see it, maybe, maybe they can't. But this one, they certainly can. And I think you'll be happy with the results. So thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Uh, you might check out one of these other, other videos here and, and press subscribe. Thanks a lot. We'll see you next time.